Hello everyone. Today we are going to start, talk about startups. Everyone is talking about startups, right? So I thought we'll really go into deep about what is startup and who's doing it, what's about it and everything. So today I invited two special guests. So one is Enosh Praveen, founder of Architeculate. Did I tell it right? Arch Articulate. Okay. Then Ran Randula De Silva. Everyone knows who Randula is. Founder and CEO of Good Life X. Hi Randula. Hi Enosh. So it's going to be a very informal, right? Uh, Enosh, if I ask you to introduce yourself, how would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Tough question <laughs> to start off with. But, uh... Myself, um, I mean, um, I look at myself as a person who, who likes to tell stories. Um, so from a very early age, uh, that's something that I, I, I realized. And um, I started telling stories at, at, you know, at school, uh, you know, coming up with various magazines. Uh, then when I went to my first work, uh, my job at Dialogue, um, I kind of dabbled with magazine as well. And then now uh, running a startup. Uh, which is actually telling stories. So you are a storyteller? Storyteller, yes. Okay. Randula. Everyone knows Randula and they put you on to startups, entrepreneurship. Actually, who is Randula? I think I'm, um, I'm simply a person who is, represents possibility. I see possibility in the most um, impossible places, I think. And I really, really enjoy disrupting conventional things in order to evolve all of us into a better place. And be it startups, entrepreneurship, art, whatever I do, I think that's what I try to do with anything I do. So I think it's hard for people to figure out where to put me, but I think possibility is in everything. So that's what I am. So we have a storyteller and we have someone who believes in possibilities, right? So now you both are talking about startups and you all have all these webinars. What's this startup means? Because that's something I have been trying to figure it out. Because a lot of young people come to me and say, I'm doing this startup. Then after one year, if I meet them, then I, would, I ask what happened to that startup. No, now I'm doing something else. So actually, what is startup? I think first of all to tell about webinars, <laughs> so we need to <laughs> we need to apologize for that because I think from the time the lockdown happened, we had no other way of uh, you know doing these programs uh, and you know keep transferring knowledge. So I think uh, it it just you know came out with a surge of uh, webinars. <laughs> it kind of got a bit out of control uh, because when everybody starts doing webinars, you know um, it was kind of too much to handle. Uh, but in a way, I think uh, that also kept, you know, the lockdown period kind of uh, manageable because there was a lot of content uh, being uh, shared online. About startups, I would say if anyone or any team is out there to solve a problem uh, in an innovative way, um, that is basically essentially the, the basis of a startup itself. So if they are ready to solve mm. any issue, that's a startup. Definitely. Randula, isn't it that the entrepreneurship? I think the word Enosh um, highlighted there is innovation. Doing it differently, solving a problem that's existing, but solving it in an innovative way, uh, in a disruptive way, where you find a solution not in the existing problem or in the existing solution, but really trying to um, do it differently um, is um, a, a typical way to describe a startup, but also it's in the way that you really grow. It's in the way that you go on the journey. It's what you do, what you don't do and how you do it. So one description on what a startup is, there can be 
a scale related description it can be a team related description it can be all of that but if you boil it down um, into just the nutshell of what it is it is really a disruptive innovative solution uh, to existing problem entrepreneurs um it's it's more like say a ceo and a company <laughs> Mm-hmm. Entrepreneurs are the people who who make startups possible. Okay. So, so an entrepreneur is an individual who is a risk taker, mm-hmm. who has you know who sets out to solve a problem. A startup is you could say maybe a bunch of people who are coming together for the same cause, but usually a startup is some sometimes championed by one person who's the main entrepreneur or the founder, and it'll have people who believe in that idea. who are supporting uh, to take that forward so there's a common denominator between let's say a family owned business and a startup there is a entrepreneur in both senses but what makes a startup a startup is the way in which they do their innovation or they they provide the solution okay there will so, be a lot of gray areas, yes, gray areas. <laughs> i would say like this entrepreneur is someone who believes on something and who does it for the market on a way of that person does it but entrepreneur uh, startup is someone who bring the innovation into an entrepreneurship right and also startup become i just want to figure it out does startup become entrepreneur or entrepreneur become a startup if entrepreneur yeah. is an individual right yeah. um so on startup is not an individual it's Start- an entity yeah. it's an entity right this is what i want because the when i do mentoring i ask I want to do you want to be an entrepreneur or do you want to start then they look at me and ask what's the different on that right so that's what I wanted to figure it out is it start- if i may add yes. into that see even if you set out to you know do a bakery and you're going to bake bread you're still an entrepreneur but you cannot call your bakery a startup it's it doesn't necessarily fall into that category uh, unless you're doing something innovative with that let's say you have some new ways of you know baking bread or using the new ingredients or you have a new method of you know coming up with this then it kind of falls into a startup so there is no like you know clearly defined saying you know concrete ways of you know this is a startup but usually anything that is you know like Rondra said something that you come out or try to solve innovatively uh with new ways of you know handling uh a new problem or an existing problem um that as an entity you call it a startup an entrepreneur can be both even the bakery man can be an entrepreneur but you can't necessarily call it a startup okay now i got so is like you know startups are very much you know uh, the gen generation the teenagers and all up right and entrepreneurship i can see or like you know people who are becoming like middle age coming up can't like all people because i actually met a grandma who was like in 50s late 50s and she said i want to do a startup and i looked at her and said Yeah, but you can be on. No, no, I want to be a startup. So I asked her, "Why you want to be a startup?" No, my granddaughter is talking about startup, and I also want to do a startup. So I was being in that trade, and I have my daughter also is talking about startup, and I'm talking about social entrepreneurship and all that. I was getting confused. So is there an age group for startup, or is just that people has thought that this is something new generation is doing? It's a mindset. So uh, you can be on TikTok. There, there, yes. There's no generate, but it's most popular among teens. Yeah. But it doesn't kick off anybody who's above thirty. It doesn't do it. Um, it's it's a trend among the young group, startups and the startup culture. Uh, but that doesn't eliminate a sixty-year-old grandma wanting to do something really badass and innovative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there is no age group. There is no age group. Right in Sri Lankan startups, you all are championing on startup. do we really have startups or do we only have a, a trend which is going on in sri lanka <laughs> interesting question <laughs> i'm def- i'm sure both of you are answering different ways but i would say uh, you know looking at looking at you know the past 10 years uh, very recently startups and entrepreneurship have become kind of um, a fancy thing like you know it has become a fad so i think maybe many people who are getting into startups or become an entrepreneur they are maybe not necessarily doing it because you know it originated out of a need it's just because you know they're just going with the flow like everybody else is doing it let's do it as well um so i would say as of recent yes what you're saying is true 
it has become kind of a trend trend what uh. is your view so i think this is systemic change right when something starts you have the early adapters um it's similar to this sustainable environmental issues um at the beginning it's a small group of people um and they can consider themselves to be the serious uh, people who are really deep down uh, involved in it when it picks up when the trend picks up and when it hits the masses or when it gets mainstreamed then it's very difficult to say what's the real deal and what's not because there's so many um but just because there's so many it does not offset um the good and serious um work that's been done by quite a few people so there's a lot of startups um that i think has emerged over the years um similar to people like basha um a lot of fintech solutions that are coming into the landscape now so i wouldn't definitely see it as a, a complete fad the hype itself um creates more and more opportunity <clears throat> for more and more people to solve solve solutions uh, come up with solutions some succeed some don't um and some just can't bite the bullet it takes a lot of gut and grit to see yourself through to not even the end but halfway through <laughs> so it is it is almost like the survival of the fittest yeah um and uh, i think we are seeing more numbers than uh, before of people who are doing serious work around um starting up their own businesses right as you <clears> said <throat> uh it depend on uh, how you look at it and also now you both of many of the startup who has been successful i have seen they have worked some and uh, started a startup so they had been like they had a discipline and structure but now i see lot of young children who are just have like waiting for visas or in the universities are starting do you think there's a difference that there is like you know they are doing it for a short time for a money purposes or uh, for as a hobby or some are continuing what that will be bringing to them i think it i mean it's like this maybe when you look at how we have evolved over the years i think now there is more accessibility because technology enables anyone to come up with you know a website or you know it immediately enables you to come up with you know some sort of a system you can develop things uh, and and create new solutions entrepreneurship and startup is becoming more and more accessible to everyone it's not like 50 years ago where you had to you know go through the middle of you know coming up with stuff that are you know good for patents you know you coming up with serious stuff and you have to like build their like manufacturing um and you know those were kind of like you know the more serious stuff now you don't have to do that i mean you don't immediately have to think about you know building you know a, a big uh, plant uh, manufacturing plant in you know, a 50 acre land those things are not there anymore now if you have a smartphone if you have like a laptop you could come up with solutions that could disrupt the entire world and it's happening i mean it's been yeah. happening for you know for almost a decade now um uber is a good example airbnb is a good example how they are like disrupting entire industries which previously thought tesla is a good example uh, uh, an industry which which people thought that you can nobody can disrupt it at all because those are like only for the big boys but here comes someone who is like you know making other people run for their money that's that's what you call you know um, um entrepreneurship with like you know the the proper entrepreneurship you you're really solving something like you know the world needs okay i actually lost track of your question <laughs> no worries uh, no because we give a name now with the names are given like startup entrepreneurship now i remember one of the key uh, leading it company which started with uh, a level students for three a level friends started now is one of the leading it companies in sri lanka so they at that time they didn't know that it was a called startup right <clears throat> so there are success stories but with the new trend do you think uh, sri lankan startup will have a uh, they will go to a market where the international market can be because we uber and everything came to sri lanka can we as a startup take this startup or one of a startup by for example one or two can we take it to a global level and say this is a sri lankan startup which is now in global i think um, that's the attempt of uh, most of us and all of us um, the sri lankan market is very small um, and um, entrepreneurs here and startups here are always encouraged to really think global um, there's also a lot of homegrown systemic issues that we need to solve 
and all of these are scalable um, to at least Southeast uh, or South Asia. Um, so it's really important and to look at Sri Lanka as a test bed in order to really trial your product and then really take it out. Um, also, there's a lot of work that can be done around providing solutions to solve very deep and meaningful problems that are inherent to Sri Lanka that is going to have a lot of social change and that is not um, offsetting a, a, a unicorn or a scale up because they are really changing the narrative for the society in Sri Lanka. So I think now the ecosystem is uh, having such varieties of different individuals bringing about different solutions. Uh, and that, that's really um, nice to see. Uh, to your yeah. previous question about um, who will succeed, about um, uh, young people coming into it, mature people doing it, I think what we've seen so far um, is a lot of um, people who come with corporate experience or uh, day jobs or um, doing this as a, as a side hustle have the tendency to succeed more because they come with the maturity or they come with a lot of experience of dealing with the world, right? You go through so much uh, and you also make a call to say, I'm going to say no to a paycheck and I'm just going to do this. And that's a massive decision, especially here, because it's not just a paycheck you're saying no to, you're saying no to a potential partner in marriage or you're saying no to your parents' dreams. There's, yeah. there's a lot that's on your shoulder. Um, as opposed to um, the very new generation who are just stepping out of school, um, who wants to start on their own. Um, very disruptive thinkers, very innovative thinkers and also I think um, that generation more than our generation are radical individuals, which mm -hmm. is good. Um, and that's the trait that they would bring into their own startups. So we are yet to see how they would perform, but I'm very excited and hopeful for them as well. You're correct, because they are not going to go with what we are giving. They are bringing a new plate and, they are, and their taste is different and what they want also different, right? So my question is, you all do a lot of startups with universities because I've been in one of the judges. My, I always think where they are going to go after this because they put so much of sometimes the solutions they bring so superb. So after one year or two years I call and because I have this, I normally follow up with people. So I call and say, what happened to that? Uh, it's there, the, I gave it, but I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm working on this uh, government organization. So I said, what happened to it? Why you're not doing it? See, that was my project. So has this startup has become a project for people to, uh, because they put up so, you know, all this competition has so much of good things. And I looked at it, I, I looked at the young people and it's so innovative. And I myself being an entrepreneur, I mentally I sell it also because I know there's a market. But I feel so sorry that they do not see a market. They cannot see how it can be make money. But they look for, as you said, they do not take that risk. They go for that job security. Mm. So how you all are planning to change it and what will bring to them, even because everyone is not going to be in startup, they also because we need employees also while we have employees. So how both of you are thinking that this will change for, especially for university educated generation? I think I can answer that in two parts. So first of all, about uh, you know good projects and good uh, solutions. Uh, there's a famous example of you know McDonald's burgers. Mm. You can be an individual who has a kitchen and you could probably do the best burger in the world. Yeah. But doesn't mean that everybody is going to come to you to buy that burger. Why? Because you have the best burgers, but you don't have the system. Yes. So people still, even though the burgers are not good or not great, uh, people still go to McDonald's because they have established a system. You could get a burger from almost anywhere in the world. Uh, and that system is usually the hardest to fine tune. And that is what's going to take a lot of experience and learning and maybe even failures to, to get there. And this is also one of the reasons why people who maybe do some jobs, they have experience and then go to do startups, they already have packed a lot of experience already and they know how to navigate. It's not that they, are, they, they have all the answers, but they are better able to like navigate with better experience. Opposed to say someone who's starting out early, they probably have the best product, but that's not enough. A good product doesn't mean that you know it will sell well because Product is just only one part. They saw they, you know, all the other building blocks of, you know, how do you pitch it? How do you sell it? How do you market it? How do you price it? 
how do you do you know customer service you know your lifetime of product and your clients and it, there's so many things so just because you know there is a university team who has a good product doesn't mean that 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 in itself is you know a formula for success having said that um if you take the university students itself probably i think maybe because of our education system nobody is taught to take risks because you're taught to follow what you're taught yeah. so even though there is like you know programs like hackathons uh, they tend to do it like a project it, in itself and that's why they they even answer saying okay it's my project which means they didn't think beyond that they didn't even think about even when they get good comments from the judges saying you know this is something that you need to pursue outside they are never even thinking that they are thinking okay how can i pitch this to my next employer and saying i did a great project like this hence i am good for this job so yeah. uh, that is a mentality i think probably from the education system itself that we we probably need to change uh so that you know naturally they would take risks naturally they would want to explore i totally agree but i again i put this isn't that that they have uh, less uh, seen successful startups a uh, startup is talking about how they have taken the risk and how they have been successful don't you think there is a gap that they do not see uh, a more uh, how do i say more mm. startups coming up and tell them that we took that risk we we made who i am today this is our brand this is where we made a project but someone told us this is going to be successful don't you think that that also need to come up in uh, this thing i mean you have that stories also like which are slowly coming up i think you know basha is a good example uh, ari mac and pick me is a very good example so these are there are stories definitely out there if you need inspiration there is already inspiration out I'm there i'm asking local locally yes so yeah. most the companies that i named are all local uh, locally there are stories uh, so it's not as you know as developed as maybe um, uh, in other parts of the world but definitely we do have some really good stories uh but you know i think lots of things needs to it's, it's 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 an entire infrastructure lots of it's not you know just handling only one piece of the puzzle won't work so there yeah. is so many things that needs to come together i'm sure ranzu like and yes <laughs> <laughs> i i think the stories were all, always there so um even before the pickmies of the world came to be during my parents generation there were successful entrepreneurs they were not named as startups yes. but they were successful businessmen um multi conglomerates we see here today have started somewhere right yes uh, but sindha lep is a sort of fun sindha lep yes yes yeah, yeah exactly from so navaloka is navaloka yeah. all of these yeah, all uh, entrepreneurs yeah. yeah um look at lakmini uh mm. board pack um but we were always taught as a children i've i've heard this many times from my parents or even my relatives or um as a child in school business nan karan yes so this taboo around it that we need to break it's not just the success stories that's going to um uh, help the, the the social taboo needs to be broken and it's happening it's happening a lot more rapidly than it used to 10 years ago and that's that's great because there's a lot of startup uh, ecosystem enablers and entrepreneurial um enablers for doing that and then uh, on top of it um a very good example of how it's done um already in the local ground for 10 plus years now in jaffna by yalit I recite this story wherever I go <laughs> uh, because they do it beautifully. They're not aiming at um, university students because once you go in, there is a mentality that you get sucked into. Yeah. I went to universities too. I got saved. I don't know how, but um, you get sucked into that. Okay, apply for a government job. You're going to get the pension, and you're going to get someone to get married to. They have set up coding schools for. college dropouts people who uh, pass a levels or do a levels and don't get into university amazing age they are young um they don't have immediate next opportunity and they are curious to learn coding and it's only 6 months it's a boot camp um and it's happening in their hometown so more and more girls even apply because they don't have to come to colombo or go to peradeni and out of that don't come out just coders or employees for tech companies but outcomes entrepreneurs and startups yatusha pramola is one she learned how to code she built her own website and she's now uh, selling um, crafts um, not only to the local market but to the international market to the diaspora market of palmara artisans in kilinonchi that's an amazing success story and what she had 
was the mindset and what she had was a community who told her that it's okay that it's okay to try that it's okay to take a risk and a community who supported her all the way to um tick all the boxes so i think so we it's need coming as you said because many of us what what you said was a, that there is a social stigma right and there's a, a way we have been programmed right you have to get educated and then you have to get a job then you have to get married then are not only married then you have to have kids yes right that's a successful person uh, life. you life yeah. right so that's something that i think uh, as a parent also i have that being told and i being yesterday i had a chat with my daughter and say yeah you had he uh, yeah, don't tell me because i'm not going to do that so that's how the new generation comes so because now all both of you why i spoke about startup is both of you coming from that background and you are speaking about startups before i finish it i want you all to uh, answer it as individuals right do you think that your startup will pay off you all in another 10 years time to be a successful entrepreneur businessman and a woman where you can give so many people employment in this country <laughs> that's a very good one so this is where i would also say that you know entrepreneurship is not built for everyone especially in a startup setting uh because you need to be blindly optimistic uh but then again once you get into a startup you shouldn't be blind you need to as much as possible you know find uh, you know support with numbers and facts and you know your trajectory all of that but then again there is this one element of you know being completely crazy and completely optimistic that anybody from outside who sees you they think you know this guy's nuts yeah uh, that's for sure that's so <laughs> <laughs> so that aspect is where i think most of the people i think most of the entrepreneurs you know or successful startups that you see right now sometimes would have been you know ridiculed or laughed at you know back in the early days but you know over time they prove very on wrong i think again tesla is one of the best examples for this uh because you know at one point you know people laugh at them and at you know very next uh, moment you know they are like you know disrupting everything um multiple industries um but this also i would say also maybe has to come down from the parents as well because most of the people uh i'm asking you yeah so from will my you perspective be able to uh, create will you be successful in another 10 years will you be able to provide employment for sri lankans definitely so right now i would say i'll say why also because since it has come from you know we we look at most of the time we look at our parents and you know we try to imitate them i think from the very moment that you know i even suggested the idea of you know i'm just going to quit my job and i'm going to do something um there was no objection from my parents uh i my dad probably helped me to get that initial registration he went and got the documents and gave it to me that support is like uh more like you know that's validating okay you're not doing something crazy um and he himself my dad himself has you know he's an entrepreneur himself like you know he has tried so many things which i have grown up to you know seeing you know he has done so many things he has also failed in many things uh like you know he has gone gone out to do some you know weird crazy stuff you know now we can call it startups back then it's just you know random <laughs> random ideas but you know looking that and then him being able to carry himself uh, you know just looking at it because i think probably that's where i saw like you know startups what it is actually uh and i think that also comes from the parents right now even this optimism that i would say yes it will definitely work within the next 5 to 10 years is because i have already seen that example at home uh and i am not i am not going to consider myself a failure if things don't work out i would figure out how to make it work in multiple different ways which means my target is not set what i am set today is not going to be permanent for the next 10 years and that's how i would answer that question saying what i think right now will it work in 10 years yes or no probably but if i am stupid to hold down to what i'm thinking right now is correct for the next 10 years that might not work okay your angula um so i i don't measure success in terms of um scale growth numbers or uh, um i'm i'm not a linear thinker i'm a very lateral person um so if you talk about creating employment i'm doing it already not through employing hundreds hundreds and millions of people into good life x but i am an amplifier for um smes and startups to grow um and really em- 
establish themselves a very strong foundation and scale out of Sri Lanka. So um, there's 45 plus companies we've worked with and they are creating more and more economic opportunities um, with the support that we are giving them through uh, giving them platforms to expose themselves and looking at possibility in a different way. So I don't think I would change. Um, I think I hope I would change uh, for better and evolve, but I don't think I would stop seeing possibility in things. I would continue to, to see possibility and connect the dots for people to uh, grow and look at things differently, look at things disruptively. And with that, my hope and my only reason to be doing all of this is that we thrive as a society. So I do hope that it will bring back economic prosperity to Sri Lanka as well as us being a free and just for society as well. Okay, great answers and thank you very much. And I think you all gave the definition of startup because it's not just a trend. It's something economically valued and it's needed in Sri Lanka. As many of the, uh, I would say, our generation thinks that startup is something that waste of time. No, it's not. It's how you look at the new world, the technology, and also it's something that you create jobs, not just numbers, as you said. It's an opportunity where it's like a chain, right? So let the world, let I would say, let Sri Lanka look at startup in a positive way. Let the parents think about their children that startup is not a waste of time. And let the schools and universities teach children startup as an employment because we still go on traditional employment. So as they said, look at startup as a new way and look at startup something economically going to benefit Sri Lanka. And thank you very much, Inosh and Randula, for coming on Plenty with Suru. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>